Um, Ryan is our next speaker. I think he's backstage. Ryan is the founder and CEO of Digital Animal. He is building an artificial intelligence platform called FTSY, FTSE, uh, to match people's shoes, to match people and shoes. So I'm very interested. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. Uh, FTSE, uh, it's what we are using as our Trojan horse to try an AI technology to serve people. Uh, it's been interesting listening to the talks all day because I think I wrote something and sent it to Paula and I've kind of rewritten in my head, so I'm curious to see how this all comes out. Um, Digital Animals, the company. Uh, I set a thesis a couple of years ago that um, we're losing our, our sense of self and our, like, our regular analog, like agrarian society self is, is kind of gone. Um, it left a couple of years ago and we're sort of dealing with this new digital life that we're in. Um, and it's complex, it's difficult, we don't really have a roadmap. Um, we see it coming and it's coming faster than ever. Uh, so part of the company and our product is to, to wrestle with that, um, to kind of bring this digital self and this physical self uh, together. I found this um, image on Google just a few days ago when I was putting this deck together, um, Googling digital animal, and this popped up. So this horse, you know, and you think about the emotions and care of a horse exploding um, and racing to what looks like a beautiful tree um, on a square floating platform. Like it's super postmodernist and captures like the way I feel. Like it's like kind of anxiety, it's kind of gross, it kind of makes me hurl, um, and it's like, what is going on? Like, I can't get my eyes off the image, um, much like how we deal with social these days. Um, was there a clicker I was going to be handed, or? I don't have it. Uh, you give it to Gordon. So I'll just keep talking while we get a slide uh, to move to the next one. Um, there we go. Thanks. We're dreaming in this reality. Um, we don't really know what we're asking for other than we're emotionally needy people that keep asking for more. Um, we're animals, we're parasites, we just can't help ourselves. Um, and so things that we've been dreaming are all hitting us in 2017. If you want to put on a VR headset, you can go horsebacking in the savannah. If you want to build a pair of shoes or a mug, you can just get that thing 3D printed. Um, Nike now has clothes with monitors on it, so you can check your heart rate. Uh, there's actually a very cool Montreal company called Ohm Signal. It's a, it's a bra with the, the, the breathing and heart monitor built in. Um, and then, of course, robots, drones, and so on. Um, we're asking for this, and it's just coming at an incredible pace. Uh, there's a few things here that have kind of been talked about during the day, but um, come into the next part of the talk, which is we have unlocked something. You know, it is the Pandora's box. It's all coming. Everything we wanted, everything we can and could dream of is accessible to us. Um, it's the future we wanted 10, 20, 30 years ago. Um, so now we kind of have to wrestle with it and like digest what it means to us emotionally and physically. Um, for the people I'm following on the Twitterverse, uh, most people look at this sort of 2025 date and definitely 2045 as like the big levers. I think we're kind of still watching the end of the 20th century with doing things in really analog ways, getting together physically, walking over to your friend's house and knocking on the door to see if they could play. Like, that's the way I grew up in the 70s and 80s. Um, you just don't do that anymore. So I, I have a bit of a nostalgia for what was the 20th century, because I was born in 77, and I'm creating this. Um, and I don't know morally or ethically um, what I'm doing, um, but I know I'm trying to solve some problems that people have and to create a better world. A lot of this for me comes down to identity. Um, my whole life I've been the narrow, awkwardly shaped kid, um, super nerdy, I did the physics degree, um, and trying to figure out who I am. Like I'm super reflective. I've got this deep introversion side. I love to read sci-fi. I'm obviously a bit of a Star Trek um, kid. Um, and still asking, like, who am I, who am I, who am I, what am I doing, why am I doing this, how would I feel about this? Well, you know, 99% of the time I'm up here. Ex Machina is one of those just amazing AI movies. I also love Westworld. Um, and a lot of these movies do tend to revolve around, like, the technology is the mirror for us to see who we are. 
right? We're kind of creating these things, much like you create your kid and you see your kid, you know, and the behavior in yourself. We're kind of doing the same thing with a lot of technologies. Um, and Next Machina did that really well around like what's the identity and when something does have its own identity, um, how do you relate to it? Um, most people, when they look at artificial intelligence and robots running around, um, get pretty terrorized because they naturally, I think the conclusion is they can and will be, you know, able to th do things that we just can't. You know, they'll be the next generation of human. Um, and so we have to think about who we want to be in relationship to them um, and what we want out of that relationship. Uh, and I think that kind of pulls a bit of a theme from today is like, what are we trying to do? Who are we trying to be? What kind of emotional state are we in? Um, and how can we manage for that? Because uh, if we don't have a very good sense of self and centeredness and grounding, we're just a runaway train and the robots will let us know what you know, they want to do with us. So we have to decide um, with our own identity intact. Um, I've kind of already been alluding to this. Um, this was a, I want to say it was a Wired article um, about a year ago. I think someone else mentioned today that sort of 40, 50 percent of jobs are going to be automated in the next 10, 20, 30 years. It depends on the pace of a, a few companies. Um, I still don't know how I feel about this. I throw it in there because that's how I feel, right? I'm building an AI company. Um, I know that I'm going to be doing this to some people in some countries in a pretty substantive way. I haven't even told you what the company is or what I do, but it's coming. And there's a lot of logic to it. Um, my business, which I'll tell you about, um, is going to crush a lot of waste, like massive waste, water, materials, shipping, carbon. There's very, very, very good applications for AI that are able to do things that we haven't been able to do in our last couple hundred years that we will be able to do. Um, so Musk and others are talking about how this entry is going to remove a lot of labor and allow us to do things which hopefully meet more of our emotional and like, self-actualization needs. Hopefully, I think as Keith and a couple others alluded to, you know, if we can feed, shelter, clothe people at scale through automation, then AI is doing its job. If we can't, then we're, you know, probably doing it for more selfish means. How can I profit off of this mass automation and get lots of robots to do work for me? Um, so I feel anxious, and I just want to extend my empathy to you if you're feeling it watching that slide. Digital Animals built a product called FTSE. Um, this actually has come out of the UBC MBA program. Um, I hate buying shoes. Most things don't fit. Soccer cleats are awesome. Most other things are just too wide. Um, I hate it. And often when I go shopping, I feel really invalidated because I try things on, I walk out of the store disappointed, or I compromise. Right? I'm always kind of compromising. Um, as I've built the company, and half of my MBA class, I should say, were women, um, they're like, you have no idea how hard it is to buy a good pair of shoes. And that came off at the beginning, right? You feel this thing, like very, very simple things that animals have to deal with, like shoes. Like it's 2017, it's still really hard to buy simple consumer goods that fit you. Um, because with mass, mass production, most products are made to a last, like a mold. They crank them out, they minimize the inventory because it's really expensive to sit on a lot of inventory. That's what took down Macy's, Target, Payless, Toys R Us. Sitting on hundreds of millions of dollars of inventory, waiting for someone to buy it to find that match. So part of the digital animal thesis is that with AI technologies, we're going to be able to match people better than they've ever had access to before what to buy, what shape, what color, the most efficient agent uh, to build and buy. No, no longer do you need to go on and try things and hope to find the right one. The right one, one can be accessible to you um, off of any website. You find the style you like, buy. Um, right now we're working with partners to just filter of their available inventory which one's best for you. Um, in two to three years, the, the process is all going to be made to order. So companies no longer have the capital luxury just to build 100 million of something, like a pair of shoes or shirts, and put it in a warehouse and wait for you to buy. It's going to very quickly move to made to order. I want it, hit buy, and either facility in Vancouver or Seattle or somewhere else is going to start cutting, printing, shipping it to you so it's available in a day, 
Um, one company we we're talking to is already at two weeks to go custom shoes made to order. Um, there's a big barrier right now on the manufacturing side and, of course, on the data side, which is what we're doing. Um, this 3D model of um, one of our client's feet uh, is done with a mobile phone. Standard mo mobile phone taking selfies, reconstructing to 3D within two millimeters. Um, it's a new progress on computer vision, uh, how to train cameras, like a single camera, how to see as good or better than a trained human. Um, one of the things that we didn't expect, but we found as we've started to talk to other people, engage orthopedists and podorthists on our data is, it's taken them 30 years to get this level of quality of data and understanding of this person. So someone that looks at feet all day and builds like, or, like orthotics and shoes would know girth of the foot, arch shape, pronation, supination. They can kind of look at you, analyze, and 20, 30 minutes later, you've got you know, some expert who probably has a PhD uh, can go away and build you a shoe or, or an um, insert for your, your shoes. Um, we can do this now in two minutes, right? So take your phone, no new hardware, snap your feet, and you've got the equivalent of a PhD behind the scenes that's characterized you uh, to 25 parameters. Um, in the academic research on, um, from Pedorthus, they break it down to 20 parameters. We had no prior understanding of feet when we started this. Like I said, I did a physics degree, I did, then did an MBA. Um, we've crushed like decades of biometric research on feet um, down to 25 parameters uh, with a team of 10. And so I meet a lot of companies similar to me, and this is what I'm talking about when um, we're like, holy shit, right? Like five years in grad school to like assess you and understand that you're supinating. So I kind of want to land on this, and this came up a little bit earlier. I think Paul actually said like the pyramid, right? Um, there's a lot of really interesting stuff, technology, AR, VR, blah, 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 around um, this stack. Um, physiological needs are obviously where we start. There's billions of people around the world that struggle to you know, be in safe conditions with food and you know, just get out of that bottom layer. I'm positioning that the big layer to deal with that's really hard for us because it does require quite a significant change in consciousness and empathy is the middle layer. Sense of belonging, identity, I feel good about myself. Um, until we deal with like those big, big, big challenges, we're just constantly going to be hungry animals, like hungry ghosts, consuming, don't know what we're doing, drinking more coffee, just trying to get to like the next day and just like parasites. And I say that like, because I know I am that, right? Like I'm just like, I'm kind of conscious some days, I have my meditation practice, like Yoga, it's like, okay, like I know who I am, what I'm doing, I go out in the world, and I'm sort of just still consuming like an animal. And so it's not to not be an animal, like acceptance, like I must eat, I must sleep, like I need relationships, I need touch, like, you know, I need these things, um, acceptance. So where is that layer in the middle for where technology can help us evolve, right, like progress? So instead of being uncon unconscious hungry beasts, we can be more conscious about what we're doing and serving others. Um, we had no idea what kind of impact this would have on people, but as we go to events, um, I'm continually stunned by the people that come up to us and go, oh my God, like you don't know how hard it is to buy shoes. I'm like, oh, I, I, I'm kind of in this business now, so I'm hearing it every day, and they're like, yeah, like I can buy 10 things off of Zappos and I return them all and like I've got these knee pains and hips and I know I'm supposed to be doing this, but just solving the shoe problem for people is a big deal. Um, Zappos returns $700 million a year in shoes. Just the carbon footprint of that is massive. Um, we're finding from measuring people and matching them to shoes, we can cut return rates to half. So, you know, I never planned on like issuing like carbon offsets with an AI company to like make get shoes onto the right people, but there's an interesting monetization off the back end, aside from charging e-commerce companies to sell the right shoe to the right person, just on carbon for this thing. Um, and then of course the emotional satisfaction that you get the right one. Um, there's a Cinderella allegory sitting underneath the FTSE product, right? Wave the magic wand 
get the right one, step into confidence, and all those other opportunities open up, right? Uh, rather than the self-defeating you know, narrative of like, I'm not good enough, I'm this story, you know, I've got to keep like sweeping the floors. I tell that shit to myself every day. Like, oh, like, what is that? Like, what is this thing? Like, still playing out. I'm like, God, I'm 40. Like, shut up. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, Cinderella moment, man. Like, let's do this. Uh, esteem. You know, it's a simple thing, and it, like, just plagues all of us. And so I hope for you and whatever technology and active... Um, work you're doing uh, is to keep coming back to this middle layer. Um, it's really tough for people to solve for this, especially at scale. I think it's one of the most exciting areas for AI companies, how to serve belonging and esteem at scale. So I'll leave you with that. Thanks.